what is a fraternity exactly? Basically, it's a, a group of people that have gathered together to, to forward a particular cause. It's a group of people who've gotten together to because they have the same ideas or because they have the same agenda and they've decided to assemble in order to fulfill and to accomplish that agenda. And so fraternity, very simply, is described as a, a brotherhood or a sisterhood in the case of a sorority that again have joined together to forward a particular cause. Now a Greek fraternity and sorority is a little different. Those are found particularly on college campuses and they are also, of course, if you have a bachelor's degree and you've already graduated, you can, you can join one of their graduate chapters. And so the Greek fraternity and sorority is a, is a group, it's a social order, a social group that, that requires different oaths or a different initiation process in order to, for you to enter. And the whole focus, again, is to supposedly aid mankind and to strengthen the community, to strengthen the person, to empower the person to become a better person. And they do that by by teaching this person different aspects of society and different aspects of life in order to get that person to mature and to grow and to become influential in their society. And the reason why they're called Greek is because they have adopted certain aspects of Greek, Egyptian, and Roman culture and philosophy in order to fulfill that goal that they believe is, is, is an ultimate goal. God does care about who we hang with. God does care about the association that we become a part of. And so this foc the focus of this is to assess Greek lettered organizations, Greek social orders, to examine them in the light of the scriptures, which we hold as the word of God. We hold the, the scriptures as the inspired word of God according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. We believe that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And that that's what's really going to define for us what this Greek order is, what the Greek orders are. And we're going to be looking at some of their writings and we're going to look at some of their works and we're going to compare those works with the Word of God and Biblical Christianity to see if it lines up and if it matches what Biblical Christianity is supposed to be. Uh, now it has been documented historically and, wit and written within their own literature that Greek lettered organizations are offspring or products of higher fraternal orders. So they didn't just pop up. There were people who belonged to higher fraternal orders that started Greek lettered organizations that we see on college campuses. And the primary fraternal order that started the Greek lettered organizations is the order of the Freemasonic Lodge or the or, or, or Freemasonry or the Mason Lodge, okay? Now by initiating each candidate through specific rituals uh, that vary from one order to another, the organizations attempt to groom initiates and place them in positions of control, positions of influence, within society to promote the mandate the organization was formed to fulfill, okay?
Now, concerning the very first thing that we're going to address, we're going to address idolatry. Okay, okay. Now, the definition, the definition of idolatry is the devotion, service, agreement with, or worship rendered or given to a false god or material image. Right? So, idolatry is the worship of another god. It's worship to a false god other than the god of heaven and earth. And... We know that that God of heaven and earth has a son, his name is Jesus Christ. And so we want to assess if Greek orders, if they swear or if they promote or honor or revere or respect or give any type of credence to a false God other than, a God other than the true God, the God of the Bible, the God of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now according to the National Panhellenic Council, which is the governing and the coordinating body of the nine historically black fraternities and sororities, the following organizations are aligned in a, in a concept that was written out by the council, by a member of the council, and then is posted on the internet. The following organizations are associated with these particular pagan gods. Phi Beta Sigma is associated with Horus, the Egyptian falcon god. Alpha Kappa Alpha is associated with Ketesh, a Semitic nature goddess worshipped in Egypt or in the Book of the Dead, which is Sekhmet. Alpha Phi Alpha, it's associated with the Sphinx, the guardian of the tomb or pyramid. Then we have Delta Sigma Theta, which is associated with Minerva or Isis, as she's also called, or, 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 or Athena, as she's called, which is the elephantine goddess of the Nile floods and fertility. All right, then we have Kappa Alpha Psi, which is associated with Thoth, which is a leader or the Ibis god of wisdom, writing and the moon. Uh, then we have Zeta Phi Beta. Zeta Phi Beta is associated with Bastet, which is also known as the devouring lady, the cat goddess of the home and sunlight. Then we have Sigma Gamma Rho, which is associated with Mott. Mott. Then we have Omega Psi Phi, which is associated with Anubis, or the royal child, the jackal god. And we see if you looked at Omega Psi Phi, if you listen to the, the one pertaining to Omega Psi Phi and Delta Sigma Theta, we see that as Minerva is considered the elephantine god in a particular culture, we see that throughout, throughout Greek culture, we see elephants, especially pertaining to the Delta Sigma Theta, we see different animals that associate with different fraternities and sororities. Deltas, they have elephants, and then, of course, we have Omega Psi Phi, and they have dogs. And those are the gods that those particular organizations are associated with. Now, in the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter, God outlines the Ten Commandments. And the very first two commandments, the, fir the, the first couple commandments, are concerning idolatry. Now, I want us to read that. Exodus chapter 20. And again, we have to use the Bible as our ruler for right and wrong. And the very first two commandments read this way. I am the Lord your God, which have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make to you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So the very first commandments, the first couple commandments are concerning idolatry. God says, number one, you shall not have any God before me. And then he says, number two, don't make the image of a false god and bow down and worship that god. Idolatry is a very serious sin. God considers idolatry as an act of hatred for him. That's why Jesus said that you cannot serve two masters. You will either love one and hate the other or you will cling to one and despise the other. Jesus said that you cannot serve two masters. And so concerning what we just read 
pertaining to the National Panhellenic Council, we see just from the beginning that these particular organizations, according to their national governing body, the National Panhellenic Council, it associates them outright with false gods. Okay? Then, I want to read something that was written in the Grand Chapter Candidate Syllabus of Delta Sigma Theta in 1990, and it says this. Our founders were well aware of the need to transfuse the ideals of Greek moral virtues with later concepts of brotherhood and love. So we see the Greek fraternities and sororities admitting that their intention was to transfu transfuse different cultures. And we know that the Greeks worshipped various gods. But God said in Deuteronomy 18 verse 9, When thou art come into the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. So God tells us, and that term abomination in this case specifically meant idolatry and the wicked actions of those people. Now any organization that honors a false God other than the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is a profane one and, and, and it is trying to thrust us away from the Lord our God. And so we have to steer clear of any organization that promotes a false God or promotes another God. If it promotes a God other than the God of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it's a dangerous organization. Delta Sigma Theta, which is the largest black Greek lettered sorority in the world, honors the Roman goddess Minerva. And an image of the female deity is on the very crest and she or shield of the sorority. And they say in their grand chapter membership intake program book, they say this is what the, the Delta Sigma Theta sorority says. That is why Minerva, the goddess of wisdom, is our sorority mentor. So everybody who joins that sorority comes under the shadow of Minerva, which is a false god. And the Bible calls false gods, says that they're not really gods at all, that they're really unclean spirits that are masquerading as gods, but we'll get to that later. Alpha Kappa Alpha, a.k.a.